Oh. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm, my name's Tony. Tony. It's nice to meet you. I'm Lily. Hi, Lily. Why'd you stop today? Um, I just, I've seen you guys out and about for the last couple of years. Yeah. All around. Uh-huh. And, I don't know, I just, I was raised Catholic. Yeah, but me I too. Kinda, yeah, I kind of like went away from the church yeah. when I got to high school. Uh-huh. And, uh, I don't know, I just have been interested in going, yeah. getting back into it. Do you have a Bible? No, I don't. Can I give you one? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. So, so Lily, do you have any particular spiritual beliefs now? Um, I mean, I believe that there's a creator. Yes. And I believe that, <laughs> I believe that God's real. I just find it hard to like, agree with a lot of uh, like organized religion mm -hmm. and um, it's hard to, you know, like growing up in a Catholic church, I'm sure you experienced this too, like the Catholic guilt. Yeah. Feeling like you're not good enough. Yeah. So, and I can see that that still hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to say something, not to heap on top of the hurt, but... I'm sorry, your first name again is Lily. 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 I'm old, <laughs> so forgive me. I'll try not to do that too many more times. Lily, one of, one of the, and what you probably didn't hear growing up, while hearing that you're not good enough, what you might not have heard, and what I want to tell you is, the fact that we are not good enough is what makes God's love so amazing. And I want to tell you more about that. Uh, I'm not good enough. No one on the planet is good enough to receive God's love. But He gives love. He is love. And maybe that's the part you didn't hear. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you yeah. heard. But, but maybe all that was pounded into your head is well, you're not good enough, and you can never be good enough, and so you better do all of these things to try to be good enough with no real hope in that, right? Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, uh, Roman Catholicism as a religion, it's, it's what's called a works-based religion. Now, they would say, we believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross, that he rose from the grave, but they would also teach, though, that not only must you believe in Jesus, but you must also do good works. Um, and, sadly, you can never know if you've ever done enough. Mm -hmm. So what the Catholic Church did to try to compensate for that, in part, yeah. was to create a mythical place called purgatory, mm -hmm. where you can go and suffer for who knows how long yeah to try to work off all of the things that you've done so that you can one day be worthy. And still, yet again, you never know how long that's gonna be. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, may I, it, you don't have to tell me. Can I ask how old you are? I'm 20. 20, okay, all right, okay. Um, and besides the Roman Catholic Church, have you ever been to another? church um, of any kind? Yeah, or? my dad, when I was growing up, my parents were divorced, uh -huh. and so uh, I went to like Catholic school mm -hmm. and Catholic church, and then my dad got remarried, and my stepmom was a member of, um, it was called First Assembly. And okay, an Assembly of God Church yeah. is the denomination. Okay, yeah. okay. And you go there for a little while? And yeah, I went there um, every other weekend, because that's when I was at my dad's house. Mm -hmm. But when I was so young, I found it really confusing to have two separate um, religions Re sure. or, you know, de denominations. Yeah, I understand. Because um, it felt like a lot of what was said was conflicting and... Um, With each other. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, what do you think is more important? What we believe or whether or not what we believe is true? What we believe. Okay. Uh, so, 
You walked up and introduced yourself as Lily. I introduced myself as Tony. I was just speaking to a young man a little while ago, and I, and I did. I said the same thing. Uh, his name was Dominic. I said, uh, Dominic, what if when you walked up and introduced yourself, I introduced myself as Tina, a six foot five African American woman who's an all star in the WNBA, and I believed it with all my heart. Would it be true? To you, it would be true. Yeah, but is it actually true? No. No, no, because. Yeah. One, I'm a 60-year-old dumpy white guy. I'm not a six-foot-five, you know, superior female athlete yeah. who's an African-American woman in the NBA. I'm never yeah. going to be that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an old white guy, right? right? Yeah. And I'm short. I'm not six-foot-five. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be in the WNBA, even if I was a good basketball player. Right. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't. Yeah, right. exactly. So it doesn't matter what I believe about that. What matters is whether or not it's true. Lots of people have varying beliefs about who God is, mm -hmm. and they all can't be true, yeah. right? If, if, one person, if one person says, well, you have to believe in Jesus and work your way into heaven, mm -hmm. and they believe that's true, and the other person, another person says, well, no, it, it's not by working your way into heaven, it's, it's by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You, you can't work your way in. Mm -hmm. They both can't be right. They say opposite things, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, they could both be wrong, potentially, mm -hmm. right? There could be another idea out there. Yeah. But because they're so different, so opposed, they're saying, they're saying opposite things. They both can't be true. So where do you think we can go to find the truth about that? Okay. Yeah, you're holding it in your hand. That's right. That's, that is the Word of God. That is the infallible, inerrant. The Bible actually says it's God-breathed. God inspired 40 different men over 1,500 years spanning three continents mm -hmm. to write down his word. And as you said, well, I believe in a creator. The God who's able to create all things is more than able to protect the sanctity and the integrity of his word. Now, yeah. there, are, there are some translations out there that try to change that. The, yeah. the Jehovah's Witnesses have changed things to fit their religion. Yeah. But all you have to do is go back to the earliest manuscripts of the Bible in the Hebrew for the Old Testament, uh, some Aramaic and the, the Greek in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And one of the benefits of having the internet is we can actually go back and look at pictures of all of those documents and, yeah. and we could see that what we have today in real Bibles is what they had in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So the authority for what is true is God. And he's given us the Bible to tell us what is true, what's true about him, what's true about Christ, what's true about us. Mm -hmm. You know, our conversation started with me affirming that, yeah, none of us are good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Bible actually says that. In Romans chapter 3, it says, there is no one who is good, no, not one. Uh, and the prophet Jeremiah writes that the heart is desperately sick and wicked. Who can know it? Um, and so the Bible tells us the, the real condition of our heart. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the place to go for the authority to determine, well, who's right, who's wrong about what they're saying about God, about what they're saying about Jesus, about what they're saying about heaven, about what they're saying about hell, about what they're saying about me. Mm -hmm. That's the place to go. That's the place to go. Uh, Lily, if you were to die today, I don't want that. You're right. But if you were to die today and you stood before God, and God asked Lily, why should I allow you into heaven? What would you say? I would say, sorry. That's okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it Truly, it's okay. It's all right. I work in long-term care. Do you? And so I take care of people right before they go. And so wow. I'd say um, that something about that, how I... I'm with people in the last moments. I share that that you're real and that you're there. Okay. So if if I understand what you're saying, and thank you so much for serving yeah. people in that way, thank you. That God will look at that and say, Well Lily's what Lily is doing is good. So many people in 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 that at that moment, in those last moments of life, they have no one, right? I mean you've probably yeah. seen that probably broken your heart where people are sometimes just kind of warehoused mm -hmm. by their family and yeah. 
their family says, well, we've taken care of them, and then they just leave them alone. Yeah. And then someone like Lily is there to hold their hand or to, you know, dab a cool rag on their forehead. And yeah, that that must that must be such difficult and rewarding work at the same time. How long have you been doing that? A year. A year. Yeah. Okay. So at the risk of offending you, mm -hmm. okay. Jesus said this in Matthew 5:48 in there. He said, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Okay. That word perfect actually means perfect. Yeah. What Jesus is saying there is that if, if we're going to try to uh, commend ourselves to God, to try to earn our way into heaven, in a sense, then all we have to do is live a perfect life in thought, word, and deed from cradle to grave. Mm -hmm. Because God's holy. He is perfect. And nothing imperfect, nothing imperfect can be in his presence. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, for God to accept that noble work that you're doing, that loving work that you're doing, for God to accept that, in a sense, as Lily's ticket into heaven, mm -hmm. you would have to do that perfectly. Not only would you have to do that perfectly, but all of your thoughts would have to be perfect. All of your words would have to be perfect. All of your actions would have to be perfect from the moment you were born to the moment you die. Now, I'm three times as old as you are. I'm 60, okay? Lily, I haven't lived a perfect day in my life. Have you? Okay. So, if you're going to put your hope in this, this very good and noble work that you do, and God expects perfection, and you haven't done that perfectly or anything else perfectly, yeah. then where's your hope? You can't really have hope there. No. I want to give you hope. I want to give you real hope. Something the Catholic Church can't give you, something the Jehovah's Witnesses can't give you, something Islam can't give you, something the Mormons can't give you. And it's not because I'm giving it to you, it's what it's what that says it's what the Bible says Lily you were created in the image of God you and I are very different you're young enough almost young enough to be my granddaughter mm -hmm. okay we've had very different lives you're a yeah. woman I'm a man yeah. different experiences we're very different yeah. but you and I have this in common you and I were both created by the Creator mm -hmm. You and I also have in common what every other human being does. Everyone knows that God exists, mm -hmm. even the atheist. Yeah. The, the Bible says that they just kind of suppress that truth, mm -hmm. kind of tuck the truth they know about God aside because they don't want to submit to him as God. Mm -hmm. And in reality, they want to be God. Mm -hmm. So they deny his existence yeah. as if that makes him go away. So we know that God exists. The other thing we have in common is that God has written his law in our heart. He's given us a conscience. Con meaning with, uh, science meaning knowledge, with knowledge. You and I and every other human being have the knowledge of right and wrong. Right and wrong, good and evil, moral and immoral. God's written that on our heart and we're different from dogs and cats and birds and fish. They don't have a conscience. Right, right. But we do, but we do. But because we're sinners by nature, we break that law every day in one way or another. Right? Now look, if if I'm locked in if I'm locked in a room with Lily, Hitler, and Osama bin Laden, and I have to pick a friend, I could tell you I'm going to pick Lily, right. right? But God doesn't judge based on how, how Lily compares to Tony, or how Tony compares to Lily, or or anyone else. God judges according to that law that he's that he's written on our heart. God judges according to that law that he's written on our heart. Part of that law is don't lie. Right? If you're like me, you've probably lied before, mm -hmm. right? Don't steal. Mm -hmm. uh, I, six years old, a <laughs> pack of gum from Mark Hughes Market oh in Lindora, gosh. Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, it scared me to death. I stole, and I stole 50 cents from my mom out of the kitchen cupboard where she kept her quarters. Yeah. I, I took the quarters, went out to the alley behind the house, put them in the dirt to make them look old and dirty, and ran back in the house and said, Mom, look what I found. <laughs> you know, as, yeah. as, as a little, right? Yeah. So, uh, we know it's wrong to take God's name in vain. OMG, either either with excitement or disgust, however we use his name, we know we're not supposed to use it improperly. 
we know that we're supposed to obey our parents, mm -hmm. right? And there's no such thing as a perfect child. Right. I've raised three of them. Mm -hmm. They're all a lot older than you. Yeah. And my grandchildren aren't perfect either, right? Yeah. They don't perfectly obey either. My my two-year-old granddaughter, Bethany, boy, she has hit the twos with a vengeance. Oh my gosh, so, my two-year-old nephew has too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's written that law in our heart, and that's the standard. His his uh, standard for moral perfection, for goodness, that's the standard by which he's going to judge us. Mm -hmm. We're all guilty. Yeah. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have broken his law. Mm -hmm. Because God is good, because he's holy and righteous and just, like a good judge in a courtroom, he has to punish that law breaking. Mm -hmm. And the punishment he's determined for that sin is not a, a fantasy place called purgatory. Mm -hmm. It's a real place called hell. Mm -hmm. okay. All of that's bad news. And I told you I'm going to give you hope. And you're like, okay. when? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if we were to die today, you and I were to die today, and God gave us what we deserved for our sin, our law breaking against him, he's going to punish that sin. He's going to send us to hell. But God is not only holy and righteous and just. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked lawbreakers every day. He's also loving, merciful, gracious, and kind. And he shows that great love. He showed that great love some 2,000 years ago when God the Father sent his son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Truly God, truly man, without sin. Born of a virgin, mm -hmm. just as the prophet Isaiah in that book yeah. declared, predicted some 800 years before Jesus was born. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that? to the very place where he would be born, in Bethlehem. Yeah, yeah, that's God's word. Yeah. That's how powerful that is. And as God in the flesh, Jesus lived a perfect life, from cradle to the cross. Mm -hmm. Lived a perfect life in thought, word, and deed for some 33 years mm -hmm. that we can't live for 33 seconds on our best days. Right. But even though he knew no sin, and even though God the Father gave all authority to God the Son, the judge, he voluntarily submitted himself to a torturous, bloody death on a Roman cross. He died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I and everyone else rightly deserves for our law breaking, for our sins against God. And then three days later, after he was buried, he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. Forty days later, with 120 some people watching, he ascended back into heaven where he now sits at the right hand of power. One day to return, nobody knows the day or the time. But when he returns, he's not gonna return as a tiny baby in a manger. He's going to return, the Bible says, as the lion of the tribe of Judah to judge both the living and the dead. So what God requires of you, Lily, is the same thing he requires of me and every other human being. And it's not to pray the rosary, and it's not to go to mass, and it's not to confess your sins to a priest in a dark little box, and it's not to do good works. It's to believe. It's to receive the gift. Salvation is a gift. Forgiveness of sin is a gift. It's not something you have to work for. It's not something you can ever earn or deserve because none of us are good enough. It's a free gift. The Bible says that the wages, what we earn for our sin is death, but second half of the verse, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Bible says it's, it's by grace we're saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It's a gift from God, not as a result of works, so that no man may boast. And sadly, what every man-made religion does, take your pick, is they distort that message yeah. by either saying Jesus isn't who he said he was, mm -hmm. or by saying, no, it's not just a gift. You have to do something to earn it or deserve it. You have to be a member of this church to get in. You have to do these things to get in. The Bible doesn't teach that at all. Literally, the Bible says that it's free. You but have to receive it. And that's where the hope lies. See, when I die and stand before God, if God were to ask, Tony, why should I allow you into heaven? I'd begin by saying, well, 
well, God, if you just look at me, you shouldn't. I've sinned against you. I've broken your law. I deserve hell. But I know you're going to let me into heaven, not because I'm good, but because you are God. You were so good that you allowed your perfect and precious and priceless son to die for a sinner like me. And I've received that gift that you've given me. So I know you're going to let me into heaven. So that's where my hope lies. My hope doesn't lie in anything I can do. My hope doesn't lie in looking in the mirror. My hope lies entirely in looking to Jesus and what he did for me, a sinner. And Lily, you can have that hope too. If you'll but put your faith and your trust in Jesus alone for your salvation. You know, the Bible says, Lily, that if you put your faith in Jesus, that God will literally adopt you as a beloved daughter. He'll adopt you. He'll forgive your sin. The Bible says he'll remove it as far as the east is from the west. And I always found that fascinating. Why not north from the south? Well, if you think about it, if we go to the North Pole, the next step we take in any direction, we're going south. North has ended. Now we're going south. If we go to the South Pole and we take one step in any direction, we're now going north. Yeah. South has ended. Now we're going north. Yeah. But east to west along the equator, so long as we go east, east never ends. Yeah. So long as we go west, west never ends. God's love, God's forgiveness, God's grace, God's mercy never ends ends it never ends and it is for those who will believe the gospel you heard today the gospel of jesus christ that it's a free gift through his sacrifice not through yours through his sacrifice and if god does that work in you jesus said unless a person is born again they will not enter the kingdom of heaven if god does that work in you he'll literally change your heart and you'll begin to love what God loves, namely Him. You'll begin to hate what God hates, namely your sin, not anybody else, but your own sin. Yeah. And you'll have the assurance of eternal life, again, not because you're good, but because of the goodness of God that would allow His Son to die for sinners like us. That's where you'll find hope. And when you die and you close your eyes for the last time, if you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're not going to be whisked off to some place called purgatory to suffer some more. You'll open your eyes to see Jesus. And you'll say, Lily, well done, good and faithful servant. Welcome into the joy of your master. Wel welcome to heaven. And again, not because of anything you've done to earn it, but because of the love God has shown you by allowing his son to die for you. Can you see the hope in that? Can you hear the hope in that? Mm -hmm. So here's my question then. Yeah. Is there any reason why you wouldn't receive that gift? No. Is there any reason why you wouldn't put your faith and your trust in Jesus alone for your salvation? No. Then do that today. Receive the gift. Not for me. Not for me. For you. Receive the gift. For you and for the glory of God who would allow His Son to die for sinners. Receive that gift. That's probably a message you haven't heard before. Yeah. And it's the truth because that's what you're going to see there. That is what you're going to see in that Bible. That's the gospel. That's the true gospel. And you probably heard the differences from the Catholic message you grew up with, yeah. right? Yeah. Because the truth is, God saves us not because of who we are, but in spite of who we are. Not because of what we've done, but in spite of what we've done. And, and in the beginning of our conversation, I said, the fact that we're not good enough is what makes God's love so amazing. Because he loves people who aren't good enough. Yeah. Jesus came to die for sinners. He didn't come to die for, for the who thought themselves to be righteous because of the things they've done. He came to die for people who know that they have nothing to offer him. That all they've done is sin against him. They have nothing to offer him. And all they can do is plead for his mercy. And for those who believe that gospel of Jesus Christ, that's what he gives. Mercy, grace, love, forgiveness, adoption, never to let you go, never to cast you aside. And when you sin against him, that is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on that cross. The Bible says if you confess your sin, not to a priest, 
But if you confess your sin to Him, He is faithful and righteous to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Not because of what you've done, but because of what Jesus has done on the cross. So receive that gift. Someone shared that message with me 36 years ago and I received that gift. And now that's why I'm out here today sharing it with you. Because someone loved me enough to share that message with me. And I love you, Lily. I love you. You're my neighbor. I love you. And I want nothing more for you than to see you in heaven one day. That's what I want for you. And I can only want that for you because Christ first loved me to die for me. And I want that love for you too. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any questions about what you've heard? Because I've talked a lot. No, I don't. I just really appreciate it. Um, it's if you receive Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and I'm not presuming to know your heart, you know what's going on in your heart right now. If you receive that gift, then I want to encourage you, one, to read that, and I would love to help you with that. My wife and I would love to help you with that. And two, I, I'd encourage you to come to church, okay? We're not a perfect church. There, yeah. there is no such thing. Right. I know my church isn't perfect because they let me be a member. <laughs> yes. There are no perfect churches. Mm -hmm. But we believe that book. We believe the gospel that I shared with you today. And we want to help people grow in their faith in Christ. And so the door's open. The door's open. We would love for you to come. Love for you to come to help you grow. Yeah. Again, we don't get to heaven by going to church. Okay? So here's this is important if you have a minute. This, this is yeah, important. Yeah. So we're not saved by doing good works, mm -hmm. but if the Lord saves us, we're going to want to live a life pleasing to him. Yeah. Not because we're afraid of judgment, right. because he's now our father, he's not our judge. Not because we're afraid of losing his love. Mm -hmm. uh, not because we're, we're afraid that he's going to turn us away, mm -hmm. but because we're so thankful for the love that he's shown us through the gift of his son. When, when God causes a person to be born again, he changes their desires. We still live in this body. Yeah. We still fight against sin. But the desire of our hearts is different now. Yeah. We want to live a life pleasing to God because we're so thankful for the gift that he's given us. So that will result in doing good things. So instead of, instead of hospice care, hoping God will accept that to let you into heaven, mm -hmm. now you do hospice care because God has received you because God has forgiven you because God has sent his son to die for you I'm going to do my job the best way I can and love these people the best I can because of what Jesus has already done for me yeah. see the difference yeah, yeah. man-made religions like Catholicism will say well you better be good at your hospice care you better do that really really well but you got to do good works believe in Jesus but you got to do all these good things yeah. and even then you can't be sure but when someone comes to true faith in Christ, they now want to live a life pleasing to him, whether it's how they are as a daughter or a son, or, or how they are as a husband or a mother, or, or how they are as, as a worker, or how they look at other people. They, they want to share the love of God with others, and they want to share this message with others because they want them to go to heaven too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so part of growing in that is reading the Bible, Praying now to your Father in heaven through faith in Christ. Worshiping Him with other believers. Um, holding each other accountable. Serving one another. Loving one another. Uh, and that's all a picture of what heaven will be like. Because when the Christian goes to heaven, they, they worship God perfectly continually they serve the Lord Jesus Christ perfectly continually with joy in their heart because the sin is gone the tears are gone the sorrow is gone the pain's gone all of it's gone it's just perfect relationship with God in heaven and so a right relationship with other Christians in the context of the church is a picture is a picture of that so threw a lot at you but so what what church what um, in in the Bible here there's information here, our website, and 
if I can give you my phone number, if you'll text me, I'll send you more information like the address and things like that, if, yeah. if you're comfortable, oh, if you're comfortable with that. Yeah. So, Thank you. Um, so yeah, if you'll just uh, shoot me a text real quick yeah. and that way I'll have yours. Um, and uh, um, my wife and I, we'd love to have you over for dinner sometime if you'd like. Yeah. Are, are, are you working or? Yeah, uh, well not today. I work, um, I work at, I'm not working again until this weekend. Okay. I got the next couple of days off. Uh, uh, what, what are your hours like on Sunday? Are you able to come to church on Sundays or is it hit or miss? Or? Sundays, since I have to work every other weekend because uh -huh. it's a 24 hour facility. Oh, okay. Um, I work second shifts. I work 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I can do in the morning. Sunday mornings. Yeah, great. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. I, I, although I do believe that this Sunday morning I'm meeting with my mom to get some uh, like car insurance. Oh, okay. Car okay. Yeah, yeah. great. Like, We're also meeting. We also meet on Wednesday nights. Okay. Um, we have, we start with dinner at 5:45, and then we have Bible study and okay. sing songs together and things like that. Okay. So, um, but I, it might be strange because I'm kind of a stranger, but. You know, we, my wife and I would love to have you over and talk to you more about these things, read the Bible with you, and have dinner with you, Absolutely. just get to know you and love on you, and, yeah. you know, but, you know, that's entirely up to you. Yeah. you know, no salesman's going to come to your door. So. <laughs> you guys do that Wednesday nights? Uh, Bible study at church Wednesday nights, okay. yeah, but as far as at our home, that whenever it's convenient, yeah, oh, okay. whenever it's convenient. But yeah, we meet every Wednesday night, we meet Sunday morning, we meet Sunday evening yeah. um, as well, okay. but... Uh, well, I appreciate you guys yeah. for welcoming me yeah. into your home. Yeah. You're welcome. Praise God. Can I pray for you? Yeah, Would that be all right? Can I hold your hand? Is that okay? Father in heaven, I am so thankful that you would have Lily stop today. I thank you, Father, for her tears. I thank you for her honesty. I thank you for what appears to be the softness of her heart. I thank you, Father, that you've allowed me the blessing and the privilege, Father, to share the gospel with her. And I pray that it has given her real hope, Father. Lord, I pray for this young lady that you would cause her to be born again to a living hope. And Father, that you would save her, that she would put her faith and her trust in Christ alone for her salvation, that you would adopt her as a beloved daughter. And Father, having done that, Father, if there's any way that me and Maria um, can minister to her or church family can minister to her, I, I pray that you would allow that to happen and that we would help this sweet young lady to grow in her newfound faith in Christ. I ask that you would do all of this for your glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May I, can I hug you? Would that be all right? God bless you, baby. God bless you. Are you going to be okay to drive? Yes, yeah? I will. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. So um, I'll text you here in a little bit. Okay. Stay in touch. As you're reading that, yeah. um, if any questions come, oh, and a great place to start. Yeah is right there. God's, all of it is God. God's Word. Okay. But that's a really good place to start if you haven't read it in a while or if you yeah. haven't, don't read it often. That's a really good place to start. Okay. Um, but if any questions come up along the way as you're reading, text me. I'm going to um, I'm gonna include my wife in a text with okay. us so you'll have her number too. Absolutely. And you can ask her any questions you want. And if there's ways that we could be praying for you or anything we could do to encourage you and help you, you just let us know. Thank you. All right. All right. God well, bless you, you Lily. All right. You too. God bless you. Thank you so much for stopping. Thank you. All righty.